Hello, everybody. I uh, thought I'd show you how to make Uncle Al's Star Wheel. Sixth graders, uh, we did this at the beginning of the year, one of our first activities. Fifth graders, this will be new to you, and we'll probably, if we are in person at the beginning of next year, we'll probably be doing this again. But it'll be uh, good for you to have a little experience with it. Uh, so doing it now is a good thing to do as well. Uh, so first, if you take a look, you have two sheets. One has a star map, the other has says Star Wheels Northern Hemisphere and then has times around the edge. There are sets of instructions on the bottom of each so you can follow along as I'm going through this. Right here it says instructions for assembling Uncle Al's Star Wheel. Right, print out all pages uh, on heavy cardstock or paste them onto a file folder or any sturdy piece of cardboard. I couldn't send the cardstock with the packet, would have been too thick and heavy. So you can just use it straight as paper if you have construction paper or the back of a notebook, or can get several sheets of paper stuck together, or if you do have cardstock, you can do that as well. Uh, we're gonna cut out the circle on this, and on this one, we cut out the inside circle, and then the dark line here. Uh, one thing that make people have a mistake with is they wanna cut the dotted lines. Do not cut these dotted lines. We need these dotted lines, All right? So don't cut them. Okay, so where are we start? We'll start with this one first. And we'll take it and just cut as carefully as you can in one big round circle. The more careful you is, the better it will work. If it's not perfectly neat, it will still work. So don't worry too much if, if you're not the best with scissors. Uh, just try to get it in the general round shape. You'll be good. Uh, as we're going around, you can also see that it has the months listed in a circle. That'll be important when I show you how to use it. And then below the months, you can see that it also has numbers uh, that go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Those are the days of the month. Okay, now the hours are on the other part, and I'll show you that in just a minute, too. So here we go, almost all the way around. And let me trim that up just a little. Just a little. All right, we got it. Get that out of the way. That is the star wheel itself. And as you look, you can see that it has constellations on it. And that's the important part. Now this part, we cut this line around the edge. Half circle here, right? All the way around, going past the hours. Those hours are the hours that you're outside looking at stars. Keep going all the way around, almost there, all right, and cut that off. All right, we're good there. Right now, we got to cut that inside out. It's kind of tricky. I'm going to fold this sort of kind of in half, pinch it here in the middle, and then give that a slice with my scissors. And then from there, I can cut over to the edge. Right, cut over to the edge. Oh, and then we cut the inside circle out. Right, not too hard. Just take your time. You don't have to rush. I'm going kind of fast just because I know it's no fun watching somebody cut paper. But it's essential to make the star wheel. I messed that up a little bit. I gotta slow down. All right, here we go, almost all the way around. Get a little bit farther. And soon I will have that inside circle cut out, almost there. Getting close. Here we go. Making my way around. All right, and I got my inside circle cut out. Now these lines are important. Those are our fold lines. Okay, the first one I'm gonna fold is the one across here. Turn it over and find that fold and give it a squeeze and make sure you got it all the way across so you can see that dotted line all the way across. Doesn't have to be super perfect, but it helps. 
Now here, we're gonna fold it again on that edge, that dotted line, and the same thing over here. So we made a little pocket is what we've done. All right, and if you have tape handy, go ahead and give it a little bit of piece of tape, but make sure you're taping down here <coughs> on the sides down here and not up higher. All right, and then another little piece of tape there. And guess what? Your star wheel is almost complete. The last thing you have to do is take the star wheel and slide it in the pocket. Now when you put it in, right, you can see that when you got it all the way down, you can see the months along the top here and then the hours. So let's say this is April and I'm going to be out at maybe, let's see, what is today? April the 14th, tomorrow's the 15th, so I can go to the 15th. And I'm going to be out at 9 p.m. So I line up April 15th at 9 p.m. And that shows me what stars are visible in each direction. So I've got Southern Hemisphere, Western Hemisphere, Northern, and Eastern. So when I'm looking at this, I know if I these stars will be in the North, these stars, stars will be in the West, these stars will be in the south, and these stars will be in the east. And it shows you what constellations are where. The ones I would start with would be Cassiopeia in the north, uh, the Big Dipper, which is kind of going to be in the middle of the sky, almost overhead at that time. Orion's going to be in the west. You can see the stars of Orion. And then, would I go for any others? I think. For right now, if you could find Cassiopeia, Orion, and the Big Dipper, you'd be great. Now, if you want to try a hard one, it might stand out. It's going to be in the south, right right below, you know, if you're looking south, you're going to see this backwards question mark. See that backwards question mark? That's Leo the lion. And there'll be a red star there at the bottom or in the middle, that's going to be the heart of the lion. It's called Regulus. So, one I would look for first in the north, Cassiopeia. Then I'd go to the west, look for Orion, come back overhead, try to find the Big Dipper, and then down, if you're going towards the south from the Big Dipper, yep, overhead, down to the south, look for Leo. Those would be four constellations I would suggest you try and find. Okay, not too hard, it can be a lot of fun. And you can use this activity anytime there is a science assigned. And you don't just have to do it on those days, you can do it any day when the sky is clear and count it for that science day. So you can do your science homework at night on any day and be good for science on that day. All right, talk to you guys later.